Alright, so here's some other applications of the same torch using the .023 meg tip just like before in 3 liters a minute. Although I did a really crappy job, here's a brazed joint we use in refrigeration. I'll show you that better when I put a compressor in at a later date. Here's a nice plumbing joint done with the same torch. You just gotta pull the torch back a little further to use that application. So now once again, this is the exact same torch applied underneath a simple stainless steel pot. And I just wanted to show that you can boil water that way without destroying the pot. Although there are two times where I wasn't paying attention and I lifted the flame up on the thin part of the metal and uh, almost burnt the hole through twice. Other than that though, if you keep it on the underneath part that is meant for taking heat, you won't do any damage to it at all. I'll show you right now. And as you see here, I'm just using a digital thermometer right in the water just so we can keep track of the temperature. Although I'm not going to bring it to a full boil, you'll see how uh, the temperature goes up very easily. Okay, so I skipped the five minutes straight shot of me holding a torch under a pot because it's so friggin' boring, but here's the after effect. Uh, after five minutes, I stopped when it got to about 172, and uh, this is what we see right here. Now, if I would have kept going, I could have easily boiled that water, and if I would have had a cover on the uh, pot itself, it would have boiled a lot faster, actually. And the pot's just sitting on fire brick right now, and I found fire brick to be an amazing thing if you ever want to make an outdoor... Uh, crude stove out of an HHO torch or something. Use fire brick, it's awesome. It doesn't absorb heat, so you can put the pot right on there and uh, the, the heat from the pot won't get absorbed into the brick. It'll actually stay in the pot. It's pretty good. And like I said before, I'll be showing you as soon as I lift this pot that there's no damage to the uh, heat absorption part of that pot. You can see that the spot where I went off uh, onto the thin metal and burnt a little bit through. But uh, the underneath part is actually so untouched it's actually cleaner than the rest of the pot if you can see the part that was sticking over the fire brick that I was heating actually it's almost like it resurfaced it it made it actually cleaner than the rest and there now you're gonna get a good shot what I mean you can see that the part that was sticking over the fire brick looks completely clean it's not burnt it's not melted nothing like that just the part where I screwed up is melted other than that you can easily boil water with an HHO torch at the same three liters a minute has been using to solder and braze and do everything else. All right, next I'm going to show the same torch uh, applied to the back of a heat exchanger. But actually, right now I just want to say, uh, anything that you're seeing me boil water with a torch or, or make this heat exchanger that has nothing to do with the heating and cooking and clothes drying experiments that I'm doing. That's a totally different thing that uh, I'm working on, and the idea is completely different than what you're seeing there. Actually, you'll see a little piece of it at the end of this video. Um, but the majority of what I'm doing here is just to show what the same torch running at 3 liters a minute with a .023 tip, all the things that it can be applied for. So this cone that you're seeing here is from a gas dryer. Any gas dryer has this cone shape down in the bottom left hand corner and um, the reason it's there is because the gas flame shoots right into that cone and that directs the heat into a channel which brings it into your drum to dry your clothes. So I just remove that cone, it's got a thermostat on the side that kicks off if the temperature gets too hot, so if you wanted to, you could actually wire that right into your circuit so that it would kick off your torch when it got too hot. Um, and all I've done is taken a bunch of copper tubes and have the center tube filled with stainless steel so that the torch when it interacts with the stainless steel should give off a high temperature and that should distribute the heat to the other uh, the other pieces of copper and I just got a simple house fan in the back blowing it's not not a good design at all at all at all I don't claim it to be I'm just trying to show that if you were stuck somewhere if you had a couple of deep cell batteries and a torch and you're stuck out in the bush or something you could boil water make heat do all kinds of stuff so we stopped this once it reached over 200 degrees and uh, I'll, I'll let it go up much higher than that once I got it set up in my shop I'm just in uh, my place right now it's not a good place to bring it that high of a temperature Okay, now I want to show you something I am using in my experiments for home heating and cooking and clothes drying. This is potassium nitrate, a molten salt. And when you heat it, it looks like this, and it retains tons of heat. And uh, this is something that I'm trying to get to flow through copper pipes, stainless steel pipes, uh, just sit stationary in certain containers to uh, absorb heat and then give it off later and uh, this is fun stuff so I'm, I'm actually really anxious to show some of the results in this it might be even a couple of months even before I have a good working unit but this stuff has huge potential and I'm really anxious to uh, to use it
And just to uh, reiterate my point, it's been 10 minutes, this stuff solidified already, and the temperature is still around 270, 260 degrees. So, this stuff really retains its heat. So, so far, without changing the tip or the liters per minute, we can solder for plumbing, we can do brazing for refrigeration, we can cook food or heat water, we can heat a area, heating space, we can melt metal like we've seen in other videos, and uh, we'll see what else we can add to this list in the next few videos.